In this particular review, I want to look at a pair of floor standing speakers from the company Q Acoustics. Now, the 3050Is, and they're the models I'm going to be looking at today, have been out a little while. And when they actually emerged, they were priced around £650 or so. Recently, that price has dropped to somewhere around £550. And I'll tell you right now, they're an absolutely cracking bargain. So let's have a closer look at these speakers. Let me tell you why I like them so much. Now, these speakers are floor standers, as I say. So for those people looking for a little bit of extended bass, they're ideal. They're not massive speakers, actually. They fit quite nicely in your listening room. They won't get in the way. They're not too imposing. They have a presence, of course. They're floor standing speakers. What would you expect? But they don't really sort of, they're not really in your face. That's what I'm trying to say. Another great thing about the 3050Is is their sensitivity. Now you're looking at around, I think it's 91 decibels, which means that if you have, or if you're quite partial to a low cost valve amplifier, the 3050Is should handle that quite nicely. Valve amplifiers are not particularly known for their high power wattage, but the 3050Is are sensitive enough to give a good representation of a low cost valve amplifier. So you might want to bear these speakers in mind for that. Of course, you can use the 3050Is for any amplifier. A standard solid state amplifier will work perfectly with these two. What I'm trying to say though, is that the 3050Is offer a certain flexibility in terms of the makeup of your hi-fi chain, which is really nice, especially at this relatively low cost. I mean, we're talking sort of in the middle of the sort of budget area on this one. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the 3050Is. And we're starting at the top here. And what you can see is one of two coated paper mid base units. They span 165 millimeters each. And this surround here is a low hysteresis. How do you pronounce this word? Let's call it hysteresis, like hysterical. So low hysterical rubber surround here. That's what we've got. The dome is a soft dome. And let's just go down here because then we'll meet up with the second mid bass unit, but also the treble. In the center here, because you can see there are two mid bass units here, smack dab in the center, we have the treble unit that spans 22 millimeters. And that's a soft dome unit as well. And hey, you're seeing a little bit of my room here. There is the famed chair where all of those crucial listening tests are done. I must give you a, a room tour. But back to the speaker. In the actual speaker, there is also a HPE. Now, this is a Helmholtz pressure equalizer. And the company says, and I quote, it's there to convert pressure to velocity and reduce the overall pressure gradient within the speaker enclosure. This technology is perfect for taller loudspeakers, they say, that tend to resonate at a single favored frequency. There are enhanced features between this I model and the earlier 3050. There's been extra work done on the cabinet, mostly inside in terms of extra bracing, which provides extra strength for the speaker as a whole. And now we've talked about the mid bass units. Let's flip around to the rear of the cabinet. And as you can see here, we've got a rear bass port, which enhances the bass frequencies. Now positioning the 3050Is, just be careful, don't push the speakers hard against a rear wall it will cause bass blooming and bass will lose focus. So take 
the speakers away from the wall. It's up to you how far you want to drag the speakers away from the rear wall. It could be six to 12 inches or more. It depends what your preferences are, the shape of your room, the sort of items that are adjacent to your speakers. Uh, but basically, I would encourage you to experiment. I would encourage you to drag the speakers six inches away from the wall, have a listen, take them to eight inches, to 10, to 12, just see where you prefer the speakers to be. Now, finally, at the bottom here, we have a set of what Q Acoustics call low profile binding posts, and these accept four millimeter banana plugs. Now, obviously, if you want to include spades as a termination for your speaker cables, you can unscrew and screw these accordingly and use those. Now, when you buy your speakers, you can, as I have here, purchase them in English walnut, or alternatively, you can also buy them in carbon black or even Arctic white. All of the speakers will arrive with the chrome bezels there. So that's a quick guided tour. How do they sound though? Let's find out. I began with vinyl and Public Image Limited's This Is What You Want, This Is What You Get from 1984 and the track Bad Life. First impression from the 3050i speakers was that the sound in its broadest sense was impressive in terms of its overall sonic flavour and how high energy dynamic music hits you. The music was presented in a big, bold and grand fashion. Now with any pair of speakers, you start talking like that and what normally follows is a concurrent lack of finesse, but not here. The 3050i speakers provided plenty of that too. Hence, there was a delicate balance with, on one hand, low frequency strength and on the other, detail from the upper mids. So let's start with the deep stuff first. Let's look at the lower frequency as well. That was supplied with some strength and heft, but it never swamped other frequencies. It was quite disciplined. It stayed where it should. It remained in position. Hence, if the mid-range created air and space, the bass never invaded that. It never got in the way. It never masked detail, which was a relief, to be absolutely honest. Treble and mid-range detail was heard in abundance, with subtle sax effects easily tracked amongst the percussion and bass guitar. The measure of mid-range insight meant that you always felt in touch with the subtle details, even in a raucous track such as this. But I wanted to investigate the upper frequencies further, so I went CD and a touch of Bing Crosby and the track Let A Smile Be Your Umbrella from the album Bing With A Beat. The beginning of this track begins with a busy series of percussive taps in which everything but the drums are hit. The rims of drums, cymbal stands perhaps, coffee pots, who knows, even flower vases. Whatever they were, they were short, sharp, tonal responses from the drumsticks. Oh, and Crosby's voice as well. The Q Acoustics handled the lot with a plum, and this is the thing about the 3050i speakers. Here I am going on about the bass, but here there was no hint that the upright bass, when it decided to join in, was being pushed forward in the mix. No sign that the lower frequencies were taking control. No, once more balance reigned with each frequency maintaining its true position, allowing the soundstage to sound measured and even in tone. Hence the percussion had plenty of space to maintain a delicacy during its initial tapping fest with treble in fine evidence, while the contrasting Crosby baritone full of delicate nuances and tiny degrees of emphasis here and there provided a neat reflection of rough texture that gave the early part of the song a delightful relief. And it was nice to see when the entire band began to join in, and obviously you get that cacophony with all these instruments at you all at once. It was nice to see instrumental 
separation. That is, the ear could separate each and every instrument, and there was a little bit of space in between each instrument. And because instruments are separated, you sort of hear the outline. You can hear where one instrument starts and stops, and where there's a gap in between. That enhances detail. There's a good focus there, there's some extra precision. So what do I think of the Q Acoustics 3050i? And it's no surprise that the company, Q Acoustics, should be congratulated for providing so many sonic goodies for the price, which is now even lower, of course. The combination of mid-range transparency and bass strength is pretty irresistible. While all genres of music are treated with a sense of respect by these speakers, they never impose themselves upon the soundstage. They just allow the strengths of that piece of music to venture forth in a natural manner. The 3050 eyes look good, they sound good, and if you look at the price, the price is even better than it was before. And even then, it was good. Now, it's pretty darned amazing. So really, what more could you ask for? And that's me done. Thank you very much for staying to the end of the video and thank you too for subscribing. It is much appreciated and thank you for your support. Please check below for the reference list of the kit I used in this particular review. You can also see links to other social media platforms that I use and you can contact me there if you wish. I also have a Facebook group, which are welcome to join. Very friendly bunch over there, very well managed and monitored. And also my Patreon page, which is full of exclusive editorial, including a range of buyer's guides. So check out that page for those. Please join me on the next video, and I would love to see you then. Until then, bye bye for now.